I, I think I was like three or four uh, years old or something. Uh, my dad was playing Dire Straits and uh, Beatles albums or something. And I was just digging the guitar sound, you know, I was just, you know, liking it. I mean, I didn't know what the fuck was going on, but, you know, I was still digging it, you know. And uh, after that, when I was seven years old, I, uh, I started playing violin and, uh, you know, just playing classical music for about uh, four or five years. But then, you know, at the same time, uh, I, I was getting more into rock music, you know, more into hair metal, you know, more into heavy metal and shit like that. You know, because my big sister, she was into, you know, just bands like Poison, uh, Motley Crue, Twist Sister, Skid Row, Guns N' Roses and shit like that, you know. When somebody was asking me what I wanted to be when I grew up, you know, I, I think my answer was always that, you know, I either wanted to be a rally driver or a rock star. My dad bought me my first guitar when I was 11 years old, and uh, it's, it's been just all about the guitar ever since. <laughs> I started with piano, and then uh, when I was nine years old, I started to play French horn. When I got older, I realized that it wasn't my instrument at all. And when I was maybe 12, 13 years old, I, I met Alexi, and uh, we started this and like playing covers from this bands we both like, Guns N' Roses, Metallica and, and stuff. And then uh, maybe after two years or so, uh, we, we started to compose own songs. Wanted to do our own demo tape from our first songs. We were maybe 15 years old when we, when we did our first demo tape. I think we, we both were really ambitious about this thing because we both just wanted to play music and to become a real band like, like we are now. So it's kind of dream come true. So me and Jaska were just uh, rehearsing uh, at my dad's garage, uh, say, uh, just you know setting demo tapes to record labels and shit like that. Um, then I think uh, 1995, Alexander joined the band, Henke joined the band as well. I think I was about 11 or something when my big brother was always listening to quite hard stuff like metal and hard rock, then I had to listen to those. Those, uh, those tracks like Slayer and Pantera, Sepultura. And I started to like them. I asked my mom to buy me a guitar and she was like, yeah, I can buy you some very cheap one because I don't want to spend any money on it because you will, you will get bored of it anyway soon. Alex asked me if, if I could join the band as a bassist. And then I said, yeah, why not? I was in the band, we, we did the third demo tape and uh, we, we were sending it all over the world and uh, we never got any reply. Everybody just rejected us, you know, everybody, every single one, you know, even the labels that actually nowadays actually would have wanted to us, but still, you know, fuck it. Then we got a, a deal <clears throat> offer from, uh, from some European small label and... Uh, uh, it was a total rip-off deal. And then we went to the studio, studio and recorded the first album for the, for the label. And when the, when the album was done... Somebody from uh, Spine Farm called me up and he wanted to sign Chilna Bottoms to Spine Farm, right? You know, I, I told the guy that, you know, we're actually fucking signed to another label. No, no. Lepe, lepe. So, and then the guy told me that, you know, what, we, what you're going to have to do is that, you know, you could change your name just tell the guy that you just fucking quit the band and that's it. And then kind of start another band called Children of Bodom who accidentally is coming up with a new album called Something Wild and that's it. Our previous keyboard player, he was kind of a flake, you know, so I actually had to kick him out. 
which was a bummer because he was a you know he was a friend of mine but anyway i had to fucking do it right so we had two fucking weeks to come up with a new keyboard player and then you know yasuke was going uh, to the same school with Janne, and then yasuke asked him you know i got a text message from yasuke uh that if i wanted to try and and play a little bit heavy metal i'm like sure i i will try because at the time Yana was into jazz and stuff like that you know he wasn't really into playing metal or anything you know but then he sent me back no well our we are still gonna try with our current keyboard player I'm like okay whatever guys a few weeks later he was like hey, hey could you could you come and you know jam with us or whatever try, try it out uh, when when he showed up he had short hair he had a white t-shirt on and uh he was just being so quiet, like so different than he is nowadays, that's for sure. The, the Booze Brothers! <laughs> Fuck! You're such an animal. Tarzo! <laughs> Tarzo! Hey, Jan, are you drunk? Yes. Well, my uh, parents put me to piano lessons when I was five. At first, I wasn't that ex excited because it was like classical music and stuff and at some point I got a little bit like tired of that shit and I quit the lessons and then my actually my dad was just teaching me for a while and then, then I applied to the Helsinki Pop Jazz Conservatory uh, at the age of 10 and then I studied there for six years. When he started ripping on those fucking keyboards you know especially when we had a song Lake Bottom on, on the first uh, first album, and we, we we told him that okay, dude, can you pull up a solo in there? I mean, you can compose it, you can write it down, whatever you want, you know, just do it. And he was like, oh fuck it, I'll, I'll just play like this, you know. Well, then he fucking did it, and he was like, Whoa! you know, it was just we were just stunned, we were like amazed that Jesus fucking Christ, that this guy's playing like James Watson or something like that. For me, the whole improvising soloing thing has being like one of the most important things about playing always and maybe that that's why when i first jammed with the cob guys and and, and improvised a little bit they were astounded by the shit i was playing because maybe it's not that common for guys to you know play like that <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Yeah, I was 17 when, when we went to the studio, I guess, or was I even 16? Even though we had, did the demo tapes in the same place, but still it was different because we were doing an album now, and it was really, it was really scary. But yeah, it turned out well, and um, when the album was done, but we had no expectations with, uh, with the sales or anything. We were actually really afraid of what, how, how people would react for this kind of music, because it was so, so weird mix of black metal and classical and... It's kind of like a guitar solo in my mom's stand thing. So then it almost hit the charts in, in the top 40 in Finland. And that was quite un unbelievable. I think it went to number 44 or something. Originally, I was supposed to just play the studio sessions for the first album and then kind of disappear. Uh, but, <laughs> but, but so happened that, you know, first gigs started coming and, you know, the COB guys were asking if you could. Get could you come and play these gigs as well? I was like, sure. And then, you know, things just started moving on and, and before we realized I was stuck with these motherfuckers. So it's like... When we had our like first finished tour, which was about three gigs in a row, then that's the first time when I saw the guy drunk and <laughs> that's when I knew that the, he, he's the fucking man. But, but by the time we were record, recording the second album, I felt that I was already a real member of, of this group. So when we did our first tours in Europe, because Spine Farm had really good con connections with the, with the European labels. So they wanted us on, on this festival, festival tour. Was it with Hypocrisy, Benediction and Covenant? That was the first tour. It was a couple of weeks, I guess, two or three weeks. When we saw the, we saw the schedule that was printed for the, for, <laughs> for the tour, and there was like a schedule for each day, and we were looking at the, okay, there's a show in here. And uh, hotel, oh yeah, that's uh, Nightliner. And it's always, it was always, 
in the every town the hotel was always Nightliner, and I was like, well, well, that must be some big hotel chain or something that we, <laughs> some nice one. And then we realized that when we got in the in the bus, it was the bus was called Nightliner. So then we realized that they were actually spending the whole two or three weeks in the bus. And uh, we didn't know that usually bands when they go on the bus, the first first <clears throat> first day they pick up their own bed and then they actually stay in the same bed the whole whole time. And we just we just thought well you can, you can just crash in whichever bed and you, you can change the places every night, and then the hypocrisy guys were a little little pissed about in the second night when we <laughs> were sleeping in somebody else's bed. It was really exciting to realize that you are actually playing in uh, in, in the central Europe for for a couple of, couple of hundred people every night. So it was very exciting. And then it was pretty much the same lineup till 19, no, fucking 2003, where Alexander quit the band, which was pretty much a fucking bust. You know, it, it was a, it was just it was just so bad. It, it was just so bad for me, not only because it was a a very important, you know, a part of Chalam Bottom, but he was you know my best friend as well. And all of a sudden he just fucking disappeared. But then we kind of figured, even though we had said